morning class 12th uh, so i hope you all are fit and fine and uh, you are studying properly for your every chapter so here uh, in our previous lecture we have finished with genetic code which was given by george gamo right so once now you have understood completely genetic code how to code for amino acids and which what is actually code the relationship between the sequence of mrna as well as the amino acid so let's now proceed towards the translation in this uh, translation process as you know that we need tRNA also so i am going to discuss the structure of tRNA also but let's first start with the step by step that how translation takes place here so as uh, the process central dogma says that dna to uh, dna first we have already finished it that is the replication and then dna to mrna is formed which is called your transcription and the last which we are left with the mrna to protein formation and this process is known as translation now for proteins we know that what do we need what do we need amino acids we need so it means uh, if you just recall your transcription in transcription we said that um, nucleotides they get activated so but here we don't need uh, nucleotides we need here amino acids so what should be our first step the first step will be always activation of amino acids in case of translation process so first step is activation of amino acids when you say something is getting activated it means what do you need you need atp atp is it's it's adenosine triphosphate and its full form is like getting activated when you need some energy so that time we use atp so for activation we need atp as well as a particular enzyme is required for their activation this enzyme is called amino because we are going to activate amino acid so this enzyme is known as amino acyl synthetase amino acyl synthetase so what is our um, complex will be amino acid with atp plus enzyme for enzyme we are writing as e so these uh, the reaction will be that amino acid combined with atp in the presence of enzyme they will change into activated amino acid and this uh, activated amino acid is known as amino acyl so what will be the uh, reaction that now uh, atp will because energy is needed so this will change into amp enzyme will be added here so this will this complex is formed amino acid amp enzyme complex and inorganic phosphate is removed because how many phosphates you are removing here atp there is a three phosphates are there and out of these three phosphate when you remove two phosphate what is left amp so our enzyme complex which is formed that is a, a amino acid amp enzyme complex and actually this is known as amino is activated amino acyl complex so this complex which we are going to take further that is amino acyl amp and enzyme and this complex is amino acyl complex this complex is name is amino acyl complex so every amino acid which is getting activated is known as amino acyl complex amino acyl right now but there is one exception which many times uh, they ask in neat also that uh, one that exception is that in case of methionine as you now understood uh, already understood that methionine is what it is our start codon so uh, it act as when it act as a start codon now it has to be activated so act activated methionine is known not known as amino acyl it is known as f methionine this is one exception here we are having in translation that is called formylated methionine means 
the first amino acid which is present at the starting position that is called f methionine and the other amino acid which are getting activated they are known as amino acyl but the first one if it is methionine then it will be called formylated methionine which is actually in most of the cases except very less in which valine is sometime there but if methionine is there it will be known as f methionine why 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 it, it is special name is given first thing it is first amino acid which is uh, getting activated and a special name is that is why given to it it is like a, when uh, you are having a class and in your class there are 40 students are there but all the 40 students sometimes doesn't get prize only first uh, or you can say second third position they get they got prize so here is also the first amino acid it is receiving the uh, uh, exceptional name and that is f methionine so first now first step is clear that is the activation of amino acid we have done with the activation part so now these amine activated amino acids they are transferred to trna so what is our complex that is amino acyl enzyme complex is a a amp plus e and it is now uh, form a complex with trna right <clears throat> because we are going to join transfer it this activated amino this is our activated amino acid right and this um, activated amino acid is now going to transfer with trna so now let's see first that what is trna as you know that this trna every rna has five dash and three dash and because these are this this is also single stranded rna this is one projection and these are its loops the three dash and has oh group which is called amino acid binding site let's quickly discuss this structure first so that we don't need to cram that what why why we three dash oh why what are these loops why this is anticodone let's see one by one that what is the structure of our transfer rna it is the smallest rna it is soluble rna means if you dissolve it in one one molar one molar nacl it will be dissolved properly it is again single stranded as you can see that it is five dash to three dash and it is single stranded rna shape of this rna is clover leaf like structure and this uh, clover leaf structure of trna is actually big because of the bonds because of the various bonds which are present inside these loops which through which the nitrogen bases basically these loops uh, they are connected to each other because of the bonding of the base pairs this uh, trna is having the clover leaf like structure so first we are having five dash rna then there is one loop then at the base there is a loop and there is a projection actually this is a vestigial projection it doesn't perform any kind of work it is a vestigial portion only in the trna then there is another loop and finally we have three dash end this end is our if it is this is and is three dash so we have five dash and here it is three dash and three on three dash end there is the oh group is present and particular sequence is present here a c c on the three dash end and three dash end is called a a site actually a a site b why it is a a site because all the amino acids they are going to bind at three dash oh site so this is called amino acid binding site so it has oh group and oh this position is the one jaha pe aake amino acids they are going to attach so this is called amino acid binding site the next is our t loop it has the sequence like g t p c g loop that is uh, it is um, having sequences g t p c g that is why it is known as g t p c g loop also or t loop also now there must you must be wondering that there is a having t usually rna doesn't have t but yes this is the loop where we have thymine in the trna and p 
this p is actually written as the psi uh, kind of uh, sign and this is called pseudo uracil this p is for pseudo uracil or pseudo uridine so this sequence is g t p c g and a t for thymine this loop is known as t loop and the function of this loop is that it help in the ribosome recognition ribosome recognize karna jaise aap uh, bahut sare there is a lot of crowd and i have to be very specific that i have to pick one uh, how to recognize that person right if i know its features but kaise recognize karenge kaise pehchanna basically so ye jo ribosome chahiye usko recognize karta hai according to the sequence so it is a ribosome zoom recognition site then there is a anti at the lower end there is a upper end there is a oh and as you can see that this upper end is little bit higher 3 dash oh is little bit outside and 5 dash is little near in inner side so lower side and the lower end there is a loop which is called anticodon arm why this is anticodon as if this is our mrna now trna will come here and this trna now the this portion of trna will have a sequence which is anti and or which have a codon which is anti codon to the a sequence of uh, codon on the mrna that is a u g so you know that t is not present so a will combine with u u will form u can combine with a g combine with c so yahan pe jo sequence form hogi that is anti codon to this code code of mrna matlab mrna ke paas jo code hai uska anti code will be formed in this arm so this arm is known as anti codon arm as it reads the code on mrna and this code is anti codon this codon is anti codon to the mrna code means suppose if there is on mrna there is present g u g then what should be on the anti codon uh, loop there should be c a u right there will be c g g combine with c u can combine with a and a can combine with u so there will be c a u so it is anti codon next is the d loop d is a uh, d loop is because of d i h u loop this is called d i h u loop d i is for di hydrouracil this this di hydrouracil actually this loop helps in amino acid recognition it is called amino acid recognition site and because of this di hydrouracil it is known as d loop so this loop will recognize the amino acid and here on 3 dash oh all the amino acids going to bind there that is the structure of our t r n a which is having amino acid binding site on the 3 dash it is having t loop g t p c g and for ribosome recognition then on the lower side it has anti codon arm and then there is having di hydrouracil loop which is d loop which help in amino acid recognition so there now you can i think you can easily now understand that on 3 dash oh amino acids are going to bind there and here this is actually this is anti codon arm so now what is have forming here now what what will be the reaction amino acyl enzyme complex amino activated amino acyl with the trna it form amino acid trna complex plus amp plus enzyme so this is our this complex is known as amino acyl t r n a complex why i am writing it as a amino acyl because this is activated amino acid so the, i hope that first two steps they are clear to you now third step in protein synthesis is uh it is a, again this third step is now again multi step this is have various stages first is the assembly of ribosomal 
subunit now you know that ribosome usually we draw this diagram and actually this is not the best way to draw this diagram but for your our understanding we are drawing it in this way this is the smaller subunit right this one is smaller subunit and this one is larger subunit if you want to go through this structure of bio uh, structure of uh, ribosome then you can go to the uh, cells uh, cell cycle uh, cells the unit of life chapter so here is the this one is smaller subunit and this one is larger subunit smaller subunit is the site where mrna is going to bind mrna which we have formed in transcription is going to bind in the smaller subunit so it helps in mrna binding site or it is called mrna binding site smaller subunit on larger subunit it has three sites e p a now see uh, we have just because this will receive our this larger subunit it will receive our trna so trna what is trna bringing kya lata hai trna it is bringing amino acid agar main aur specifically puchu amino acid kis end pe attach ho rahe hain three dash end of, of trna so a site pe yahan pe trna will come and this is called amino acyl site and this will receive amino acid who is bringing them trna is bringing them who is receiving them a site is receiving them and where is this a site present in the larger subunit of ribosome so you can understand now that ribosomes trna they are important uh, organelles they are important ones which help in protein synthesis p site now amino acid if you are just getting amino acid to unko ikattha karne ka koi fayda nahi hai we have to form a bond and which pep, uh, which bond they are joined with the help of peptide bond so p site what is this p site now a yahan se amino acids are coming coming they are coming here so they are joined with the help of at a p site which is called peptidal site which is for the peptide bond formation now amino acids are formed they are joined so now there is a exit site so trna will exit from the e site we will uh, see in our um, later steps that how this process is happening here but for the uh, but for right now you need to understand that how this is the structure you have smaller subunit where mrna is going to attach trna is going to come here and going uh, and going to leave amino acid which is received by a site amino acyl site then there will be bond formation peptide formation because amino acids are joined by peptide bond and from e that is exit bahut sare jab kabhi aap bahar jaate ho to there is a outdoor pe likha hota hai exit so same here is a also exit site for the trna two sub unit now we said that these sub units has to assemble but in normal in our normal cytoplasm these sub units they are not assembled they are present like the this one smaller sub unit different and larger sub unit different they assemble only they join together only when protein synthesis has to take place all the time they are not assembled so process of assembly of ribosomes that needs compulsory magnesium ions means during this process if i ask you what do you need that is the magnesium ions if magnesium ions they are absent then these two subunits they will not assemble so if in your questions come that which ions they are responsible for assembly then you will always mark magnesium ions so here is was our first the uh, first sub uh, point in the process of protein synthesis that is assembly second uh, step is attachment of mrna so now you know that uh, smaller sub unit has the mrna binding site so here you can see that mrna is bind to the a smaller subunit and a larger subunit has three sites e p 
a so this is the step where actual process of translation is going to start that i am going to discuss in my next part that is translation part 2 till then go through this basic machinery which we need during the translation and you need to understand each and every point very carefully